This is sort of an unboxing and assembly of the uh, Anycubic Mega Zero. Just ordered on Amazon. Now, this is sort of like their newest uh, model, I think. Like, just released this year. And it's supposed to be easy. I've never done any 3D printing. I don't know very much about it, so... Uh, we'll see how long this takes me to set up and figure out. And uh, since we're sort of stuck at home here, we'll just uh, see what we can do with this. All right. So assembly instructions. Assembly, Mega Zero assembly instructions. Okay, step one, install frame. Okay, so I'm gonna get all this stuff out of here first. Uh, looks like it passed the QC, so that's good. Yeah, let me take this right out of the box. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> okay, power cables. Power supply. Controller box, I guess. Yeah. Frames. Looks like the spool thing. Scraper. Stepper motors in here. Get sure how this is all one unit looks like. And it's attached to the controller here. Stepper motors. Big one and a little one. Some threaded cable. Some sort of unit. Okay, that's the first layer. The other, I'm sure that's the other side or part of it. Base plate. Take all this out. Okay, it's just like the bottom frame. Let's put that to the side. in the box. So this has a 220 by 220 by 250 uh, built surface so uh, this must be the front. Okay. Um, so let's look at the instructions.
So, looks like all these screws and Allen keys and things are in here. Some PLA, it says, filament. It's in a sealed bag with some loose, uh, loose crystals there. I guess that's the dryer stuff. Um, yeah, I think everything's la labeled here, M425. Not sure what that is, looks like a stopper. These aren't labeled, but we'll see. Some sort of card, after service card. 8 gigabit, gigabyte uh, chip. Some tools, wire, looks like kind of a wire cutter, Allen keys, wrench, some more bolts, keep that with the bolts, more bolts, these are uh, M4 16 millimeter, four pieces, these are M5 45 with washers, four pieces. Uh, M5 25 millimeters, four pieces with washers. Uh, not sure what that is. Anyway, use some sort of USB thing. And uh, USB to uh, mini. I'm not sure that's mini USB. Anyway, so it's lots of stuff. Okay. So step one, install aluminum beam to the base. So we're going to need a, a washer with the M45s. That's these guys. And we'll take it, we'll need one of the tools out of here. I think that one's going to be big enough. really fine ones in there. So M45, 45 millimeters with the washers. Now what's this say? Front, back. The front has, oh, <laughs> missing something already. Missing one of the nice plastic things on the front. See in the back, yeah, there's all four, so I'll probably just take one of the ones from the back, put it on the front. I might call them just to ask for that extra piece. Oh, hold on, no. That's supposed to be like that. <laughs> Never mind. This is the front, the part with this missing. Okay, so. Is the same on both sides. Looks like it. Four or five. Does this have a four or a five on it? Are these labeled? No. But this one has holes. So it's definitely on this side. And the holes go towards the bottom. This one doesn't seem to matter. It's the same on both sides. So there and there. Okay. So 
So I'll just pause that while I put these on here. It's just going through the bottom with the, the washers. This one, it doesn't seem to matter which way. I'm not going to go super tight quite yet. Which I got the crossbar on and everything. Okay, that's uh, one, two, install the Z motor. Okay. Now, uh, how do I know which one's the Z motor? What has this on it? Okay. So it goes on the back of this side. Those holes. So that's the M425. These two, two pieces, yeah. So it says motor cannot tilt, so actually I'll make sure this is nice and tight, so it's not on any sort of angle. You get more leverage with the long end than trying to do the short end uh, of these things. So, step three, install the coupler Z motor. Okay, that's this long thing. Okay. 
And there's some set screws to go in here. And at least one of the set screws has to go into the flat side of the uh, stepper motor. Ooh, this thing's greasy. <laughs> okay, so the set screws are already in it, so just make sure that uh, it's on the, at least one of the sides is on the flat side. Oh man, that's gross. And this is going to be the tiny guys that are installed here. Okay, so you're going to need some paper towel just because it's pretty greasy. I guess the top one's already done. Too small. Let's put this next one up. So, flat side, make sure at least this side's in. Okay, flat side. Ugh, oh, man, this wrench is all greasy now. Okay. Make sure these are tight too. Yeah, they're nice and tight. Now I do have some Loctite I could probably be putting in here, but I'm not gonna worry about it for now. If I find these start slipping off or anything or getting loose, I'll put the Loctite on it. Uh, okay. The set screws are already in it, so that's fine. Okay, step four, the mod... Oh, gosh, this is gross. <laughs> uh, I don't want to... Is there any other things I need to touch this thing with? I'm going to get some paper towel. Okay, so now I have to do the install the X module. Hold on here. Is the X module is this whole section here? So one. Turn the coupler to to lower the X module by eight. Okay, so, all right, that's after. Once I install this, okay, it's actually attached to this already. So this box. So I'll put the box to the side. There's this motor. So which way does the? Okay, I'm still facing the back. upside down right now and the wheels like that
probably giving me a lot of space to work with here. There we go. That's better. So, this has to go on here somehow. Don't see exactly how. Are they going along these things? Is that it? Doesn't seem right. Okay, yeah, so they do go in between these things. There we are. Ah, perfect. And that has to go there, and then by turning this, there we go, eight centimeters down. Guess I better get my tape measure. Okay, it wasn't too bad. Step five, install the Z-limit switch. Okay. So we've already got rid of some of this stuff. Okay, it looks like they want you to turn it around. Oh boy, so it has this with it now. Just be careful. Turn that around. So it's on this side. Oh, what is that? It's on this side. Yes, it is. Actually, I'm just going to just leave it here. So turn it around since it's closer to me. Alright, Z limit switch uh, facing up. This looks like it's the motor and the switch is facing out, but how do I attach it to there? Don't tell me the holes are on this side. <laughs> so, there were holes on the side after all. They don't explain that on the first part. Yep, two little holes on this side. So, step one, they have the, they make sure that you put the two, these two holes here. but they don't explain about the first two, the side two holes. All right, well, oh yeah, they do, okay. So, first problem is I gotta just switch this around. So, let me bring this guy back up. Take these off.
hoping I didn't tighten these. I might actually put my reading glasses on <laughs> so I can actually see these instructions. Um, here's the holes I didn't notice earlier. I could just cut the video to here so it makes me look smarter than I am, but anyway. Okay, this guy back on. It's kind of sharp at the top here, so I just gotta be careful not to do anything to these wheels. Okay, bring it down eight centimeters. Now this is loose, so I'm gonna go back and check the instructions here. Does it say to tighten it yet? Finger tight. Okay, I can do that. Okay, 
So now back to the stepper switch. Facing down. These are M4 16s. Two of them. M4 16. Pay attention to the relative position of the U type hole and the screws on the Z limit switch. Okay. For future alignment. Started. All right. Those tight. Those not super tight because it says you might have to align those later. Okay. Step six: installation of the extruder. Okay. The extruder is this white thing, and the motor. So this guy. little motor here. All right. So these are M338s that we need to use. These are the M338s, these super long guys, they must be. It's the only pack that's not labeled. This is it. No, M5. M8, that means it's smaller, so these are thin. Must be these three, and there's only three of them, and there's three in here. Okay. Process of elimination. Still facing me, this up. Goes in here. And somehow this guy goes in the bottom part of this. With the this part facing out. This knob on this side. And the, these three holes. And there's no hole there, so must be that. Nope.
Now how tight does this have to be? Pay attention to the direction of the extruder and motor. Okay, extruder is on it's everything to the back, yep. This is plastic, so I don't want to. Just want to do it snug. I don't think I'd need to go any tighter than that. Just make sure they're all the way down. It's not shifting. Good. Insert the Teflon tubing. It's already in. Oh, this Teflon tubing. <laughs> Okay, hold on here. Let's put you over there. Step seven, the top aluminum beam. So with the silver part facing up, I guess that's for the washers to grab onto. These two holes, which side do they go on? The opposite end of the... Oh, that's the back. This way. The same side as where this extruder is. Okay. As far as I can tell. So those are M525s. M525. Got four of those. Yep. With the washer. Don't know why the silver part has to be up. But. Well, it's a cute little machine. The print head cable needs to be laid behind the right end of the aluminum. The print head cable I can't tell. 
that means. Okay, so this is the motor side. Has to be behind, what does that mean? Oh, okay, it just means it has to go. Oh, see. <laughs> is this going to fit through there? Oh man, yeah, let's see what they mean. Okay, so let's go behind. It has to be on the same side basically as this white thing. So, I should have done this before, it would have been easier. But, you can still do it. Okay. And, does it have to be, does it really matter, does it? No. Okay. So there we go. That makes sense. It makes it happier. So I don't really have a 100% flat surface here. To... Uh. Just wobble here. And I know it's because of my table. Uh, I just don't want to put these down 100% until I have a flat uh, surface down here. Install the filament holder. Okay, I can do that part at least. So M416. Okay, that one's done. That's done. M416, two pieces. That would be this one.
Okay. This guy needs a little plug on him, so which side's which? This goes on the back. So same size of this thing, and the controller box goes on there too. So this is empty, this is empty, this is empty. That's empty. That seems better, like that, so. Controller box goes on the front. There we go. And these are M5-6. Except these. M5-6, two pieces. Uh, T nut. I guess that's that. So the T nut goes where? In the back. Uh, T nut. Okay. Because it fits, slides in behind. So how do you get it in there in the first place? You slide it along there the whole way. There's one there. Well, you just have to put it in sideways and hope for the best here. Yeah. Okay. How am I going to turn it the other way? I think it's going to turn itself after it's in there. I don't think it will. We'll see. I guess start with that guy. seems to slide itself in. Good. Good. Nice. 
nice. Okay, that's nice and tight. It's tight too. Yeah, it's a little bit off the... Anyway, it's not quite there. Okay, so... Gonna tighten up this bottom, these bottom ones before we go any further. I think it's gonna straighten itself out here from the feel of it. So this way it's like not moving, because I know my table's messed up. This way, yeah, it's because my table's not right. So that's going to be a problem, because this is probably the way I'm going to be printing. Um, anyway, we'll see if all this is level anyway, and we'll uh, worry about that after. Connect all those wires to their corresponding ports by the label, respectively. Okay. <laughs> uh, one, extruder motor. By their cables, respectively. Okay, so... Yeah, all the wires are back here. So, how are these labeled? Y. M. Is there a motor on here? Okay, there is a motor down there. See, I don't know what access things are. X. X E. What the heck? There's two motors here. Is something going here too? Oh, there's a motor here.
Okay, you have to help me out here. Extruder motor is E. Okay, this is the extruder. One extruder motor. Okay, so. One's higher than the other? Yeah. Okay, so this way. Okay. X motor. That's the side one here. Okay. X motor. Two. X motor. Yep. Yeah. go. All the way in, yep. Okay, three Z limit switch. Okay, there's a blue and a red. The red is towards the motor. The blue one's a little looser. Easier to get on. Okay. I'm not coming off. Four Z motor. Where's four? Four is the Z motor. What's this guy? See? Yep. Okay, Z motor, and this must be the. Oh. No limit switch, okay. Random color, what does that mean? Anyway. Do the same, the red the farthest towards this downside. There we go. Blue. And this must be the last one. And is there a special way to do this? Six. Oh gosh, I need my glasses. Are you doing this wrong? All right, good. So, and then, uh, there's something called three leveling. Okay, I'm not, I'm gonna make sure that my table's level first before I do any of that stuff. Okay, so I'll stop. Okay, so leveling, plug in the power cord.
I'm just going to bring this up to the top. I just want to make sure it wasn't hitting the print bed. So what it says in the instructions is make sure your platform is not going to hit, the nozzle's not going to hit this thing. So I'll put it back to where it belongs. It's at 8 centimeters. It's going to have to home, so. centimeters yet. Oh, a bit further down, there we go. Alright, so let's turn it on. We'll see what happens. Ready. Plug in the power cord, switch on the printer. Then tighten the four adjustable nuts underneath the printing platform to avoid platform when homing. Okay. Step two, press the knob on the screen to enter the main menu. And navigate and press knob prepare, home, home all. Prepare, home, Home all. Okay. So this is actually going down. So anyway, don't have to bring it up after all. After homing, the nozzle is still much lower than the platform. Case one. After homing the nozzle is still too far from the platform, adjust the Z limit switch up or down. Okay, so we're just gonna see where this guy is. Uh like what's extreme for highness here? After homing, the nozzle's still too far. Are fully loosened. Okay. It's pretty high up. I'd say about half a centimeter. I really don't feel like adjusting the... So I'm going to put the... Limit switch further down. Okay. Whoa, not that much. Jeez. Eesh. Okay, so you want to try it again? Yeah. So prepare home home all. Oh. 
Okay, that's too low. So now, what do I do? Try this again. Prepare. Home. Home home. I'm just going to do home all again because I'm not sure if you really watch it. Hard to tell. It's a little bit closer. Home. And it's about the same as it was before. Home, home, home. Uh, it's about two millimeters above the surface. I guess we'll try that. But what is too high or too low? It doesn't say. Turn this off. Is it touching anywhere? Back seems like it's about a millimeter. Okay. It's lower. Oop. Okay. So we'll try this again. I don't know if like a millimeter or who knows. Okay, control, 
Oh, not control. I don't get back. I mean, okay, control. No. Nope. Prepare. Home. Home off. So, step three, after home, press the knob on the screen and enter the main menu, navigate to prepare, level corners, oh, let's do that. So what do I do here? Okay, put a piece of A4 paper at the first leveling point, okay, then manually just tighten or loosen the corresponding nut. The purpose is to adjust the distance between the nozzle and the thickness of a paper, holy mackerel, alright, slight drag, alright, I can do that. dragging on there now. I can feel it touching there. So it's going in and it's touching the thickness of the paper. Alright, that's fine. So, next step, after leveling the first point, press the knob and choose next corner. Okay, next corner. I take it we do the same. That's a slight drag on there. I guess it could go higher, but I'll wait. Because actually, it's, you can see when it hits the edge, it's, it's still pretty loose. Okay, that's quite better. Um, so next corner, This one seems like it's already there. Oh, yeah. Cool. 
cool. Okay. Next to the, please adjust the four corners three or four times, two or three times to ensure leveling results is okay. Otherwise, the platform could be scratched. Okay, so we'll go to the next corner. Oh, yeah, see, this one's too tight. No, can't get it under there. Uh, Next corner. Ooh. Okay, next corner. Next corner. That's, that's pretty good. time here. Yep, good. Okay, so I've done that. Filament in. Press the knob on the screen to return to the main menu. Okay, prepare move axis. Move axis, move Z, move Z, move one millimeter. Turn the knob to set the v Z value to 100. One hundred. Okay, and then press the knob to confirm it. Well, I didn't even confirm it; it was already going. Return to the prepare menu.
Okay, it gave me some red filament here. Uh, but I do have a box of PLA, so I think I'll use that to start with, maybe. Just leave that in the package. PLA 3, new. Printing filament. Okay, so I got some AMZ3D, black, 1.75 milliliters, 180 to 210, uh, PLA black. Okay, now this is in a sealed container. Um, it's like really raining out today. It's like a very rainy day. I know you're supposed to keep this stuff sealed and away from. Uh, sort of wetness, so how am I going to seal this afterwards? Anyway, I'll figure that out after. But for now, I'll just open it up. bag, so I'll probably put it back in there. Okay, so the direction has to go towards the outside. Now I'm a little worried because, uh, there we go. Don't want it to kink. Oh, sorry, I have to do something before this. Uh, return to the prepare menu, okay. Prepare, and press the knob and choose preheat, prepare, yep. prepare, is there more? Okay, preheat PLA. The target temperature of the nozzle and full screen is 190 degrees. Okay, so you can see 190 there. That's the target temperature. When the knob will reaches the, temp the target temperature, place the filament in the filament holder. Place note the feeding direction of the filament. Straighten the end of the filament and press the handle on the extruder. There's a handle on the extruder. Press the handle. This Press the handle. Press it out. Okay, here we go. That's weird to say press. It's actually pull. Um, okay. When the nozzle reaches target, place the filament on the filament holder. Please note the feeding. Straighten the end of the filament and press the handle in the extruder. Insert the filament to the extruder and let it reach. Let it reach into the Teflon tubing. Let it reach into the Teflon tubing. Okay. Not 100% sure of this. OK. 
Okay, so I have to pull on that to let it through. There we go. Felt it. Okay, you can see it in the Teflon tubing. Okay, just gonna put it like halfway up the Teflon tubing. And let it reach into the Teflon tubing. Okay. Press forward. So we're at 190 now. Press the knob on the screen to enter the main menu. Navigate to knob. Prepare. Move access extruder. Okay, so. Prepare. Move access. Extruder. Move one millimeter. Turn the knob and the filament will be automatically threaded. Oh yeah, there we go. So it's slowly moving through here as I turn this. And it'll be melted through the nozzle. Then press the knob and clean then press the knob to return and clean the filament residue on the nozzle tip. Okay, so we'll keep going, we're almost there. Two hundred. Here we go. And all right. So there's some coming out. That's good. Uh, Turn the knob and the filament would be automatically fed to the extruder. Okay, that's fine. During feeding, the melted filament is not smooth or too thin. Please adjust extrusion force. I don't know. During feeding, it's not too smooth or too thin. It's not smooth. What does that mean? It's too thin. Better distance is about 18 millimeters. Well, it's about 18. It's exactly 18. So I'll just leave it there. I'm not going to touch anything. All right. Insert the SD card to the right side of the control box. SD card. Got it right here. Insert it to the right side of the control box. The printable test file, OWL G code, has been saved to the SD card. Press the knob on the screen and enter the main menu. Press the knob print from SD, OWL G code. Alright, well. Here we go. Is this the SD card slot? It's very small. There you go. Okay. No SD card. Refresh. There we go. Uh, Cura, wind nozzle, owl, owl. Is that what I want to do? Oh, it says refresh, yeah. G code. The printer starts printing when the temperature reaches the target value. The estimated print time is two hours. 
Wait for the nozzle to cool before I, I don't want to burn my hand. Refer to full usual manual. Alright, well, let's see. Oh, print from SD. Go down to LG code. And there we go. Let's see what happens here. So here he is, the finished dowel. Um, spin him around here a little bit. Came out pretty good, I think. I don't know, it's my first time doing this, so. Um, but it uh, looks pretty nice to me. I don't see any 
errors or anything, like in his eyes, everything looks good, his beak. Um, it's quite shiny. Here's the top. Anyway, it's pretty cool. Uh, there's the bottom. You can see the lines going across there, but I don't think that really matters. I think that's kind of normal. Um, yeah, it's really neat. Uh, I might try to print, I guess people to get a flat bottom, they print on glass, maybe? It doesn't really, it's the bottom. I don't really know why people care too much, but um, anyway, really happy with that. Thank you.